Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cancer. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the Wnt beta catenin pathway and its involvement in uh, the formation of cancer, basically. Uh, and specifically, what we're going to look at is uh, we're going to look at um, a, a form of hereditary cancer known as um, familial adenomatous polyposis. Okay, so the Wnt uh, beta catenin pathway, but then we'll look at the end at how it goes wrong, basically, in familial adenomatous polyposis. Right, and it's important to say that this isn't just, um, isn't just something that goes wrong in cancers, in this hereditary form of cancer. This is a major pathway that you find huge disturbances in in many different forms of cancer, specifically uh, colorectal cancer. Even uh, non-hereditary forms of colorectal cancer, you often see that there are flaws in this pathway, basically. Okay, so let's, let's begin by discussing uh, the Wnt beta, beta catenin pathway. Uh, then what we'll see is how it promotes uh, cell division, uh, the role that it plays in the cell cycle overall. So we'll take a look, we'll look at the pathway in detail, then we'll take a step back and look at its involvement in the cell cycle as a whole. We'll then look at um, how, it, um, how it can lead to cancer, basically, and we'll concentrate on familial adenomatous polyposis. Okay, right, so let's say we have a cell sitting here. What's the, the question that we want to ask is how do we get this cell to divide, basically, is the question we want to ask. So how do we get this cell to divide? Well, one of the ways in which we can get this cell to divide is through the Wnt beta catenin pathway. So basically, what you can do in order to make it start dividing, you can um, you can uh, expose it to the Wnt protein. All right. So let's begin. How do we get this cell to divide? Basically, uh, because at the moment it's not dividing. It's not going through the cell cycle. So when a cell is not going through the cell cycle, it's said to be in interphase of the cell cycle. So if I just give a brief reminder of the structure of the cell cycle, basically the cell cycle has, um, it usually is said to have four phases, but you can make it five by adding in interphase. So interphase is when a cell is sitting and doing not, and not dividing at all. So interphase is basically a huge, great, long, period between divisions. And then in order to actually start dividing, what it will do is it will go into G1 phase, or the first growth phase, or the first gap phase, whatever you want to call it. And that's a phase where you start uh, producing a lot of the proteins associated with um, with division of uh, the DNA, of the genome, basically. Then what you go into is S phase, which is the synthesis phase, uh, where the uh, DNA of uh, DNA within the cell is actually uh, copied, it's replicated. So uh, basically, in G1 phase, you get ready to replicate the DNA. In S phase, you actually do replicate the DNA. Then you go into G2 phase, which is the phase where you are getting ready to actually uh, divide the nucleus into two. And then you go into M phase, which has two phases. So I'll firstly say there is mitosis, uh, which is nuclear division. That's where the nucleus actually divides into two. And then finally, there is cytokinesis, uh, which is um, when the actual cell divides into two. And then you get two daughter, nuclei, uh, two daughter cells, uh, which can then uh, go into interphase again, so they can sit and do nothing and not divide for as long as they please, basically, until they receive a signal to actually go into G1 phase again. Okay. Right, so both cytokinesis and mitosis are counted as the M phase. So that's why you would say usually there are um, five phases of the cell cycle, or four phases of the cell cycle, if you don't count interphase as a phase of the cell cycle. Because interphase is really just this huge gap between consecutive cycles of the cell cycle. Okay, right. So, what we have at the moment is we have this cell sitting in interphase, basically. It's doing, it's not dividing, it's not, um, it's not dividing, it's just sitting and um, doing its chemical reactions, respiring and making proteins and whatever else cells do. Right, 
Now, how do we get it to go into G1 phase? How do we get it to begin this process of dividing? Well, basically, you can give it uh, a lot of chemical signals. And one of these signaling pathways that we are looking at in this video is this Wnt beta catenin pathway. So basically, in the um, cell membrane of this cell, so let's say this is the phospholipid bilayer of our cell, there is um, a receptor, basically, for this protein, Wnt. Okay, and the receptor is actually made up of two different proteins. So the first one, the famous one, the more famous one, the one that people can generally remember, is one known as the frizzled protein. And the frizzled protein has actually a very similar structure to G proteins. So it has these seven transmembrane domains, seven membrane spanning alpha helices. But this is not a G protein coupled receptor, it's a uh, frizzled receptor, uh, which is often denoted FZ. Uh, but stands for frizzled. Uh, I don't know why it's called that, um, but uh, it's an interesting name. So basically, the Wnt receptor, half of it consists of this frizzled receptor, and then the other half consists of a protein that only spans the membrane once, and this protein is known as LRP. And it can either be LRP5 or it can be LRP6. So this protein here is either LRP5 or it's LRP6. Okay, so these two together, this LRP5 or LRP6 in this position with this one membrane spanning alpha helix and this frizzled receptor or the F uh, FZ receptor, which has seven membrane spanning alpha helices, um, they dimerize together to make the overall Wnt receptor. So this, both of these together is the Wnt receptor. So this entire thing here is the Wnt receptor. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is that uh, if we now spray Wnt onto the cell surface of our cell, then here comes along Wnt. So we'll say this, this circle represents the Wnt uh, signaling molecule, and Wnt is going to come in and bind to uh, the Wnt binding domain, which is made up of a mixture of this MRP5-6 protein and this frizzled receptor protein. Okay, so I'll colour Wnt in a special colour, it can be green. Okay, so here's Wnt. Right, okay, so what does this cause? Why does this lead to um, the promotion of the cell actually going to divide? Why does Wnt signaling lead to um, the cell dividing, basically? Okay, well, basically, when, um, when the frizzled receptor is activated, what happens by Wnt binding? What happens is that it associates another protein. And um, where am I going to draw this? I will draw it here. Okay, so another protein now comes and binds to the frizzled receptor once it's been activated by Wnt binding. And this protein is known as disheveled, or DSH for short. And I really don't know who came up with these names, but disheveled. Okay, disheveled. A word that I don't often use. Uh, but disheveled protein comes along and it binds to the intracellular aspect of the frizzled receptor once uh, the frizzled receptor has received its ligand, basically, which is Wnt. Okay, now, to understand the next step in the pathway, we need to take a step back. We need to go away from this and just talk about um, something known as the beta-catenin destruction complex. Right, so basically, in the cytoplasm of cells, there is a protein known as beta-catenin. Okay, so here is beta-catenin. And basically, uh, beta-catenin has a certain level within the cytoplasm. And if beta-catenin goes up, it promotes cell division. Uh, so, usually, if we don't want our cell to be dividing, beta-catenin needs to be at a low level. Okay, so if this cell was not dividing prior to being stimulated by Wnt, then beta-catenin needs to have been at a low level. So how is beta-catenin kept at a low level? Well, basically, there is a complex known as the beta-catenin destruction complex. So I'll talk about this. The beta-catenin destruction complex, which breaks it down. Well, it doesn't actually break it down. Instead, what it does is it targets the beta-catenin for ubiquitination. 
beta catenin destruction complex. Okay, so this beta catenin destruction complex, it takes in this beta catenin molecule. It adds some sort of group onto uh, the beta catenin molecule, which then means that beta catenin can have a ubiqu uh, uh, can be ubiquitinated, so it can have a ubiquitin group put on it. So let me just outline what this does. It takes in beta catenin. It turns it into beta catenin with some sort of reactive group on it. Okay, so I'll just put. Um, what should I put? I'll put some. It's put something on it, but it itself does not put uh, the ubiquitin on. Um, so what happens is because it's added this extra group on, some other enzyme now adds ubiquitin onto that group, basically. So beta catenin destruction complex targets beta catenin for ubiquitination by putting this group on. So what happens now is that beta catenin is ubiquitinated. And basically, proteins which have ubiquitin added onto them, uh, which is what ubiquitination means, um, they end up being targeted for degradation by the proteasome, basically. So I'm, here I'm adding on ubiquitin. So we'll say this great big green structure here is ubiquitin. So I'll move this over here. All right. Okay, and once beta catenin has got this ubiquitin bound to it, and in fact, if anything gets ubiquitin bound to it, uh, then it ends up being targeted for proteasomal destruction. So what happens now is that it goes to the proteasome, which is basically quite a sinister thing in the world of proteins. It's a tube, and uh, proteins go in one end, and amino acids come out the other end. So it's, it breaks them into pieces. It's a um, quite formidable thing if you're a protein. So. Basically, once beta catenin has had ubiquitin stuck onto it, it gets destroyed by this proteasome. So that beta catenin destruction complex is responsible for um, sending beta catenin to the proteasome for destruction, basically. So this beta catenin destruction complex is what keeps beta catenin levels in the cytoplasm low. Okay, and in the next video, we'll see what makes up this beta catenin destruction complex and how the Wnt signaling pathway interacts with it.